Welcome. Today I want to be talking about emissive textures, which in my opinion are the only good use of the diffuse texture node in Octane. Oh, this is probably what you're going to be able to create. It's going to be pretty sweet. We're going to animate the emission textures too in After Effects. Um, so let's hop into Cinema 4D. I have this uh, not super dank scene yet. Um, it looks pretty garbage, but I just added, I'll just add an empty HDRI environment. Um, and then I'm going to create a Cinema 4D material. I'm going to go to the node editor or the, the material editor, create a texture emission, um, hop into the node editor actually. And then under texture, I'm going to go to Cinema 4D Octane. Mine won't let me do it, so I'm just gonna plug it in here. RGB spectrum, and then plug this into the texture node, and I'm going to make it a bluish texture. Um, and then I'm gonna control the power right here. I'm gonna only make it 20, um, and that looks good. So I have this atom array, which looks pretty good with, with emissive textures, because it looks like a little Astera thing. Um, and that looks pretty sweet. This plane is for another emissive texture. So I'll just turn it off for now. And that looks pretty good, but I'm going to create an Octane camera, go into post-processing, enable post-processing, and then crank it up a little bit and then make sure I come up here to the little camera swapper doohickey. Um, and now I've got this sweet, sweet emissive texture. Um, and if that's all you need, then radical, but I wanna be able to animate this emissive texture and it's kinda hard to do in Octane. I guess you could keyframe the opacity a bunch, um, but then you don't have a whole lot of flexibility to art direct it. So I'm gonna show you two ways to animate these guys. And so we're gonna hop into After Effects Create a new composition. I'm just gonna make this four pixels by 1,000 pixels uh, at the same frame rate as my composition. Um, and then I'm going to grab the pen tool and draw a little line with a white stroke. And I'm going to add a trim paths, not a twist, add a trim paths and then end it, keyframe the end at zero. Move a few frames forward, keyframe the end to 100. Start a new keyframe thingy for start, and then move a few frames, few frames forward, and then keyframe the start. And then I'm gonna select all of these, go into the graph editor, Select all of them again and add the little pick whippy thing so we can make this a little more aggressive of an animation. So this is what we have. Whoosh. Whoosh. And that's all we need. So I'm gonna trim the comp area and then hit control M to add it to the render queue. And I need to render these out as JPEG sequences. Um, because that's the only video file type that Octane likes. So, emission, vertical, radical. I'm just gonna go ahead and render that out. And then we're gonna hop back into Octane or Cinema 4D. Uh, go into the node editor and create an image texture. Here, dialog box is going to be pretty aggressive on you, and then select your the, the first frame of your image texture, the zero 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 one, and then go into animation, movie frame rate, the same frame rate as your comp, and then calculate. 
and I want this to loop. So I'm gonna select loop on that, and then we're just gonna plug this guy into the opacity. Um, and voila, look at that. Looks pretty cool. So you can do a lot of cool stuff with this. Um, if you wanna incorporate like Red Giant sound keys or something and make it audio reactive, that would be pretty cool. Um, I've done that for a few like music visualizers, tour visual stuff, looking things. Um, and it turns out really pretty well. Uh, and then also, if you want to just create a new composition in After Effects, make it like a normal size, well not normal, but um, you can also just kind of create your own animations in After Effects. So I'm just going to type out disco.tv, the name of the production company that I'm probably going to start eventually. We'll see. Make it a stroke. Two strokes. Um, animate the opacity. Range selector. Keyframe the start and the end and then um, I'm just gonna randomize the order real quick and turn the smoothness off so these guys just show up. Cool. What a sick animation. Can't you tell I'm a professional motion graphics artist? I spend like 12 hours a day in After Effects um, for work. Usually it turns out a little doper than that, but. Okay, composition, add to render queue. I'm just gonna do the same thing here. Um, uh, export it as a JPEG sequence. You probably spend a little bit more time on your animations. Um, but then you can just apply this in the same way that you applied it to this atom array, but to a plane so that you can get really cool animations that hopefully look a little bit better than that um, on into your uh, Cinema 4D comp and have the light react with your other stuff. So create extension C4D Octane, Octane Material, under the Diffuse tab, Emissions, Texture Emissions, click into Texture Emissions and then Goodness, this tiny screen is messing me up. RGB spectrum. Maybe turn the power to like 50 or something. Um, and then import this the exact same way you did the other one with an image texture node. I don't know why that saved right there. And then Plug this into the opacity. Oh, we didn't set an animation. So, 30, calculate, and let's ping pong this. And I'll apply this to the cube. And then, whoa, look at that. Cool. I don't know. I don't know where you want it to go. Um, you can also get some cool results with this texture. This is just kind of the extra credit portion of the of this segment. Um, with emissive textures in general, you can get some cool results if you uh, create specular materials or super glossy materials and apply them to the floor or the ground plane. Um, and then you can do a little bump map with maybe some noise um, and get some like cool watery looking stuff out of that. And then, uh, especially if you combine this with a cloner, 
So I'll drop this atom array into a cloner and um, maybe shrink it down a little bit. Seems a bit big. Or a bit too small. 0.5, 0.5, 0.5 on the transform node on this cloner. Um, and then maybe just do a plane effector on this. Make it affect the Y position and the X position and the Z position. Maybe add a random effector as well. And make this affect everything. Um, and then under the plane effector, well, yeah, whatever. Um, I'll create a, a random field and a bit of animation and then loop it to the comp size. And now we get floating block boxes with animated textures. They look pretty cool. If you only want some of these textures to be animated, there's just so many possibilities, it's ridiculous. Um, you can duplicate this atom array, find that texture, duplicate it, uh, delete this node and maybe make this one red or something. Um, and apply this texture to the other atom array within the cloner and then you'll only get some of these to be animated. And yeah, bada bing, bada boom. Okay, cool. I have the comp how I want it finally. Um, I'm gonna go into render settings. So I use um, direct lighting, 256 samples with GI diffuse, and I usually up the specular depth to eight, the glossy depth to four, the diffuse depth to four, for like 90% of what I do. If I have specular materials that need to be seen through, uh, like if I have a glass texture on a model or something, then I'll use path tracing. But I generally try to avoid glass models because path tracing just takes forever and I like to make a lot of stuff really quickly. Um, so direct lighting and then in camera imager, I'll usually enable denoising. It does give it a little bit of a cartoony effect, but it does look pretty clean. Also disclaimer, denoising sometimes crashes Octane and your entire machine goes down with it. So um, that's a major bummer. I don't know what the big issue with that is. Sometimes in settings, if you go under other, I've seen on some forums that multi-thread for materials causes some crashes. So I have this off for everything. Um, and I think it ships off now ships with it off. Um, but yeah, that's about it for my Octane settings under the Octane render tab. And then under your Cinema 4D render settings, make sure you select Octane render. And then really the only thing that I change here is I use the denoised beauty pass. Um, sometimes I'll do, if I'm doing any sort of compositing, and I'm not just using the shadow catcher, uh, like any real compositing, then I will need to add beauty pat or like extra passes here. And I can do another tutorial on that as well, but this is super simple. So we're just gonna save this somewhere. Um, save those files and output, make sure your output scale makes sense and everything is good and then ooh I'll put all frames before you go to bed and bada bing bada boom that is it go ahead and uh, render add a render queue ka chow 455
I hope you learned something. 